Hello everybody, Bruce John Dickinson here from Water Bear and this YouTube channel is designed to help you as a musician or as a member of the band to grow your career. So we do this stuff day in day out, so like and subscribe. And today's video is a victory amp range comparison test and in the process I'm going to give you five tips to master your own tone along the way. Tip number one, if you buy an amp that's been made in the UK, it has not been subject to import duty, so therefore you get a lot more amp for your money. Tip number two, a guitar sound is largely in your fingers and the way you hit the thing has a big impact on what comes out the cabs. And we all do this differently. There's as many ways of getting the sound out of a guitar as there are guitar players. And that's why it's vital that you try as many amps as possible because there's no such thing as a perfect guitar amp for everybody, but there might be a perfect amp for you. Tip number three, when you're trying a lot of different amps and you want a place to start, try setting all the controls to two o'clock and it gives you a consistent starting point and then you can perhaps start with the presence and fine tune your sound and try and get a sound that feels right to you that brings out the detail in the character in your playing and also think about how it sounds in your band think about what the hi-hats are doing what the bass drums doing what's the vocals the keyboards whatever think about your space and try and get that out of the amp tip number four be a little bit careful with reverb and other types of ambience. Um, don't just get addicted to it and use it regardless of the room you're in because often if you play in a larger space it's got its own reverb. So get used to playing dry and then use the reverb like a set of gears just to find the sweet spot where it feels okay in the room. Don't forget to think about the effect of the PA. If you put a mic on your cab, you might be putting reverb on top of the reverb that you're producing. So just be a little bit cautious and sometimes less is more. Tip number five, when you're thinking about guitar sounds and perhaps trying to create sounds you've heard on a record, listen out for the character in the distortion. There's definitely a different type of distortion that comes from the back end power tubes of the amp and a different type of distortion that comes from the preamp. And confusingly, some guitar sounds are a mixture of the two and some are weighted more towards that preamp kind of character. So we'll, we'll hear that in some of these victory amps right now. So I'd like to introduce you all to Martin Kidd. <laughs> Martin Kidd, who's the genius and the brains behind this series of amps, which, which we would call lunchbox amps because they've got this kind of portability feature, which is great for the working touring player. Um, so Martin, how did you get into designing amps in the first place? Fiddling with uh, 100 watt Marshall I had. As we know, it was a good sounding amp, but far too loud, I couldn't yeah. use it anywhere. Right. And I didn't like the sound of overdrive pedals. And that'd be an old super lead or something, would it be? Yes, it was. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. So from that, doing that 27 years ago, we're now to put to the current day where we've been shown around a factory making all your amp designs, which is an amazing thing. And we're about to test all these amps. So let's quickly go through before we do some playing and tell us the main features and the history of each amp. The RD1. Rob Chapman's signature amp. He wanted a, a smaller lunchbox than we were already making, but could I get? 30 watts out of a pair of EL84s and we got close, got about 28 watts. For guitar players that it, it's a comfortable volume level. Yeah. But you have got a, some kind of power soak design into this. Uh, yes, there's a, a switch to lower all the plate voltages in the valves. It actually makes quite a difference on that particular design. It uh, does reduce the volume but uh, it gives the amp a quite a different feel as well. I'm quite suspicious of small amps and this, this, this was the thing that made me totally think again because it yeah. sounds like a big amp. Generally speaking what sort of players would be into this amp i know it works for me as a classic rock exponent yeah a classic rock somebody that really is happy to do things from their guitar volume control right yeah yeah which i do all the time yeah yeah so if they want to clean a sound then you just back it off so it. single channel old yes. school yeah. yeah old school players really <laughs> So we love this one, the RD1 is a super, super affordable, super portable, what you put into it is what you get out of it, it's a great amp. 
So, Martin, tell us about the Sheriff 22. Is, does that refer to its wattage, 22? So it's a bit more. It's a right. same transformer set as the RD1, so you can push it up to about 25, 28. As you can tell from its colour scheme, yes. what, what we're after from this Yes, sound. it's a bit plexi-like. It is indeed, yes. But that, that was the idea. Uh, but just to make it uh, controllable and to, to give some of the classic sounds... But yeah. in a, again, a, a portable package. A very interesting amp to me because I'm a big user of plexis and I found a lot of the modern ones have missed the point a little bit. They're a little bit too fizzy and they don't sound good with a PA system or with a drummer. Whereas okay. this one seems to retain that classic British kind of mid-range. I think it's where they get, to, where some of the modern plexi designs are, are really hot-rodded designs. Yes. So they kind of miss the point. They don't give you what you might expect from a plexi. They sound good. A lot of those amps are a little bit hot-rodded for me. Sound really good in the guitar shop. Yeah. And less so in the, in the rehearsal studio when there's a drummer and certainly not so good through a PA and not very good for recording. Whereas this seems to have that gutsy character. Hard to play though, not an easy amp to play for. Well, no, that, that's the thing. They, they, it hasn't got a high gain preamp. It's, mm. uh, but I put the master volume after the phase splitter valve in the power amp. So right. some of the power amp overdrives, that's what you're hearing. And that's that classic Paul Kossoff, Thin yeah. Lizzy thing. That's the thing that I like. Yeah. The essential difference between the power amp and the preamp is that kind of character, I suppose. And it's that harmonic content, the clarity. A lot of the records that we love, like the Hendrixy stuff, and you know, it, it's, it is largely coming from that kind of philosophy, isn't it? It is, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you turn it all the way up, then it's like a non-master volume amp. So you could yeah. use it like a... Yeah. Like an old plexi, yes. Yes, and again, you know, you good usable volume. But there's also something interesting here because you can you can have less of your preamp gain and more of your, your power amp gain. Mm. But also there is an effects loop. But yeah. you, there's something in there that can disable the effects loop. Yes, yes. If you don't want it there, you just it switches it out. You're right. So without altering too much of the other circuitry, so there's not a huge difference in the yeah. tone. Because a lot of retro purists or bigots. <laughs> like me, um, we don't like uh, master. Vo we don't like effects loops particularly, um, because it just seems to interfere with that direct kind of clout you get into the into the power amp, you know. So it, it's, um, I suppose, it's a modern take on on the British classic, isn't it? Yes, that, that, that's the idea. <laughs> So this is the brew sound. This is my favourite by far because it's, ju it's just me. It's an incredible experience because it's like playing for a 100 watt super lead, but it's a manageable volume, but all the harmonics are right. It behaves in the right way. When you hold a note, it'll hang there for you. It's very hard to stop playing through this amp. It makes me want to keep going. So I think we need two of those. So this brings us on to the RK50, which is the Richie Cotson signature head. Now Richie's one of those interesting players. I like his playing because he combines the past with the present, with the future. So he's a modern sounding player with a lot of soul and a lot of feel. What have you designed here? What did he want out of an amp? Very simple is what he wanted. He wanted, uh, initially he wanted three knobs. Right. So gain, tone and volume because the amps he'd been using were small combos, not yep. master volume, and yep. that, that, uh, Fender and Marshall, if I may say. Yeah. And uh, they were just gain or just tone and volume yeah, 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 sometimes. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the mark of a very confident player who yeah, could just turn an amp up and yeah. make it work. Yeah. Um, and we put reverb in. It's a digital one in the lunchbox head. And then he said, well, it would be cool if you could fit tremolo in. So we we'll right. that in. And that fills up the front panel nicely. And is that based on a particular traditional sound or is it something a bit new? It's a little bit like the RK100 signature. Uh, okay. Uh, I took things from there. Right. Initially, I didn't. We had a kind of remote um, design process, r &D yeah. process, where he was in... America and I was here. Yes. So I had to rely on feedback from what he said, but we managed to sort it out that way. So, and this obviously is a single channel amp as well, so it's designed for players who are comfortable with the volume pots control. Uh, and also, there is a gain boost B 
built in somewhere, isn't there? Is it on the yes. foot, foot switch or something? Yeah, there's just a, and it's a preset amount of gain boost. Right. Just to give Richie a, a full on lead sound. Yeah, just a bit, of, it. a bit of giddy up when you need it. So the RK50, a lovely amp, lends itself to clean sounds really well, but essentially it's still an old school single channel amp where you're doing the bulk of the work on the uh, volume pot on your guitar and you can get all those lovely characteristic retro tones out of this amp. But it does have a modern feel to it, it's quite tight, quite precise, there's a lot of detail. So. We love it, we'll take one of these, definitely. So next up is the V30, and this is the Mark II, and I believe this amp sort of germinated with discussions with Guthrie Govan. It did indeed, yes. He wanted um, an amp that he could take on an aeroplane and it would fit in the overhead locker. Okay. So the first part of information from the, from the design brief was the footprint. Right, so it's got to be cabin. Well, it's got to be that size. And then cabin luggage, yeah. Like after that. Right. It, was, it was supposed to be a 30 watt amp, to begin with yeah um, but uh, when I made a 30 watt amp it just wasn't quite loud enough okay not enough headroom because no. Guthrie does a lot of clean stuff doesn't he so he needs an amp with yeah, yeah some headroom just compress a bit yeah. too much so. and what sort of players would be into this amp we know it's Guthrie's favorite but as a traveling touring machine what other players would be into this do you think I think those that feel that they need clean a crunch and a lead sound right um, so that, that provides that in that package it has a shared eq but um, yes it, but it's got some v versatility if you're the sort of player who relies on channel switch as part of your style yes um yeah. then that's probably the one yeah that would be the one This is a really interesting amp because I wouldn't normally play through something like this. It's also got a real hard, fendery, fast response on the front of the note. So there's an awful lot of detail. It projects really well and the level of gain on it is incredible, but it still re retains its clarity. So it's got a lot of beef, a lot of guts. So you could play a stadium anywhere in the world to any number of people and this amp will deliver. So Martin, the last amp in line is the Kraken. So what's the characteristics and history of the, the design of this amp? It's uh, for rock and metal players. It has two different gain structures you can switch between. Yeah. Uh, neither is a clean type sound. Right. And but you can also switch independently of those gain structures. You can switch two master volumes. So you can right. Have two, okay. Two volume levels. That's really useful if you're touring and you've got an out front sound man who might not know the band, which sometimes inevitably happens. So you can boost your own solos. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's why we. Very do. useful. Yeah. Uh, there's a switch on the back to tighten or loosen the negative feedback and how that grips the speaker and right. for, you know some of the tighter and detuned. Ah, that's for when people have got a fast, fast right hand attack and there's detuned drop C or whatever yeah. it is and it, it gives you a bit of clarity and a bit yeah. of tightness I suppose. Yeah, that's yeah. what that's for. You can get a full 50 watts out of it. So you could actually play a festival, you could play a stadium with that? Yes, yeah, if you wanted to. Mm. This was the amp I was most scared of because it's something that's out of my comfort zone. I fly the flag for classic rock and I don't really feel qualified to play this. 
It's designed for the modern rock player. However, really enjoyed it. It's an unfamiliar amp, so I did that thing of setting everything to two o'clock, and it actually really surprised me because I could do a gig with this amp all day long. It's, it's super gainy, but it's still clear and it's got that clarity. So I'd be very interested to know what someone like Dan Weller from Sixth would do with this because he would really get the most out of it. But for me, still like it, still very happy to do a gig with this amp all day long. So we've had an amazing day at Victory Amps with the genius that is Martin Kidd, the man behind the designs of all these incredible amplifiers. Uh, and also, once again, we've realized that guitar sound largely comes from your fingers, the way you hit the thing, and that, you know, there's an amp here that works for me better than the others, but it'll be different to the one that works for you. So try a load of amps, develop your own style. In the comments below, let us know your, your guitar rig, your favorite rig, and why you like it. If music is becoming a really important part of your life, then don't forget we run a BA Honours course in guitar playing and also a distance learning BA Honours course, which is two year intensive, which you can study online. And we also do master's qualifications for experienced players as well. Mm -hmm.